Whether you're going there for exchange program or to finish a degree or simply move there or work there, this video is going to help you better adapt to this country. Hello guys, thank you for clicking to this video and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ray, I'm from Hong Kong and in today's video, we are going to talk about living in France. Do you look like French? I live in France for more than six months with my boyfriend who is from France and his lovely sweet family. I study in a French school which most of the staffs and students are French. During this period of time, I noticed a lot of things that I didn't know about this country and I wish I knew them before I went to France. I've made some mistakes and uh, it is really bad and quite embarrassing now looking back. Right now I moved to Singapore, this is another long story, but I figured it could be helpful to share my honest thoughts and opinions about living in France as a foreigner with you. So let's begin. Before I start, there are two things I need to specify. First of all is that um, the experience you're gonna get will very much depends from which area of the country to which city of the area and which quartier of the city you are staying in. For example, uh, you probably know that South of France is like a paradise on earth. Great weather, beautiful landscape, amazing. However, if you ended up staying in the biggest city in the area, which is Marseille, um, I will be worried for you. <laughs> However, if you have a big budget and you can afford to rent an apartment in one of the best Cartier in that city, which is probably the 8th arrondissement, you should be fine. Second, when I speak of France and France in general, I do not mean Paris. This city is so different from the rest of the country, and I'm sure there are plenty of exceptional cases can be applied to this city. Because Paris is a much, much, much bigger city than any of the cities in France and the lifestyle you're gonna get in Paris is probably gonna be similar uh, as other big cities in the world, for example, London or New York. So if you're going to Paris, um, uh, maybe you need to do more research and uh, be aware that some of the uh, things I'm gonna share may not be applicable. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to share is probably going to be the most important observation. From my observation, uh, a lot of social codes and the ways people behave in France are based on a very fundamental mindset, which is uh, each individual is important. Everyone is unique and special. It may sound very lame, it may sound nothing special, or like okay but trust me it's very important this uh, hidden mindset is encrypted in every behavior of french people okay so let me explain we can always tell there is this hidden mindset by the way people greet each other asking people how should they spending the time to listen to others opinions or others just simple complaints and uh, the way they show appreciations and the amount of time people just sit there with their family or their friends and doing nothing but just talk and talk and exchange opinions and talk and listen to others and talk. It can last for hours and they really take themselves and other people seriously. So the good thing is that people don't label you based on the amount of money you make or uh, what kind of career achievements you have achieved and what kind of house you have, what kind of cars you have. Uh, it will be considered pretty impolite and a bit shallow if you try to bring up these types of topics during a uh, normal conversation. The downside of it is that uh, you cannot expect to have the same level of convenience in Asia as in France. No matter it is food delivery or calling a cab or government administrative works, they take their time and they don't think that the customers or other people uh, is the God and I have to serve you well and I have to make you happy. 
because they think they are as important as any other people, no matter、uh, how rich you are or how educated you are. For example, food delivery, they are slower,、uh, they are a bit more expensive, and sometimes you have to go downstairs and get your food. And because of this mindset, there's one thing you really, really, really need to pay attention on. That is,、um, never tell any French people you look like someone else. Don't do that. I have learned it the hard way. This is a bit offensive. I once tell one of my friend that, "Hey, you're like my cousin in the U.S.," and she got offended badly. She really got pissed. What I was trying to say is that you're so kind and you give me such a warm feeling that reminds me of my cousin. But what she was thinking or how she felt is that, how dare you compare me with someone else? I open my heart to you, and then you just、uh, say I'm just another random person in your life. Yeah, it, it was bad. And then, of course, I apologize to her, and I keep saying sorry. I didn't know that. I didn't mean、uh, that you're a random person at all. I take our relationship very seriously. I didn't realize it is an offensive thing to say. Okay. Th- so the second point is that、um, French people, in general, most of them, they are very open-minded and welcoming to other culture. But for some people, they have a pretty low tolerance level when it comes to their own culture. There is nothing wrong with it. It's just some observations that I have made. I know for a fact that they love Asian culture. For example, they drink bubble tea. They love to watch Japanese animation or Korean drama. But some of them are really、uh, sensitive. Or、uh, they really get、uh, a bit emotional. They really hate it. Okay, some of them, some people, they really hate it when people try to apply the French culture in another new way that is different from the traditional way. No matter you're French or not,、uh, it doesn't matter. For example, one of the things my boyfriend really failed to understand is the way they try to modify the croissant. Sometimes they cut the croissant open and they put some hams or cheese inside. Sometimes they put strawberry, mango, and cream. For him, it is pretty hard to understand. The second example is the French language. If you go to France and you don't speak French at all, and you expect people to speak English to you because it is supposed to be an international language. Mm, you will probably experience a lot of difficulties. Imagine you're French. You speak French for all of your life. You know for a fact that French is the most beautiful language in the world, and everybody, no one else, speak a language other than French. One day you're working on the street, minding your own business, and suddenly a foreign-looking dude approaches you, and、uh, he starts to to you. And of course, you will be shocked and confused because you don't understand him. But then he gives you an even more shocked face when you try to explain to him that you don't understand the language of the country which has been rivalry of France for hundreds of years. How would you feel? You know, for me, I will feel pretty bad if someone does that to me. At least ask them politely before you start to switch to English. At least ask them. Oh.、Uh, I don't speak French very well. Do you mind that we speak in English for a bit? Or I don't speak French very well. Do you mind that we use Google Translate? Something like that would be much better than just throwing some English long sentences on their face. So the third point is that French people, they are complicated. Not all of them, but some of them, they are really complicated. If they don't like you. Or you done something that they considered rude, they will make your life like hell. This does not apply to any of my friends or the people that are close to me. They are amazing. This especially apply to、uh, people who do the administrative works, for example,、uh, the government paperwork,、uh, banking, 
stuff and um, probably post office. If you have a business that you need to handle by any of the organizations I mentioned above, please make sure they don't hate you. Always, always say thank you, say please, try to explain your situation politely, take the time, never interrupt them, let them finish the sentence. These little kind gestures will make everything much more easier for you. Sometimes the bank or even the government, they make mistakes, no matter how hard you try to explain your situation to them. For example, I'm Asian, I have a Chinese name, my English name is a translated version of my Chinese name. And for my Chinese name, I have two Chinese characters for my first name. The bank and the social security department of the government both take one of the characters of my first name as my first name and the other character as my middle name. So I ended up having a halfly spelled English name on both my bank credit card and my social security green card. Actually for the bank it should be alright because it's not like a government official document uh, so I let it go. But for the social security green card I have to write them a handwritten letter and send it to their office asking them to change the name for me. Okay, so the last thing I would like to talk about is racism against Asian. Mm -hmm. To be honest, it really depends on the city. For the city I lived in, I don't feel it. There are not a lot of Asians in France in general. Most of the time, uh, Asians are considered hardworking, nice people sometimes two nights maybe. They stay away from trouble and they are really polite. So I think Asians in general don't have a bad reputation in the country. It's pretty hard to have any bad feelings against us. Of course, sometimes when I was in France, I got stared in the street. I believe it's just because I look different and most of them, they're just curious. That's why they check you out. But then, of course, there are plenty of exceptional cases and there are all sorts of people in the country. If I feel like I'm receiving an unfair treatment from uh, my professor, for example, I will first think it is because he or she doesn't like me personally. Uh, not because of race, but because of my personality or the way I behave during the class. The truth is that sometimes you can never tell whether it's racism or not. If you are in France and you feel like you are receiving a certain unfair treatment, it's better that you talk with your friends and you analyze the situation together. I think you will have a better understanding whether it's really a cultural difference or a racism or just a personal sentiment. Thank you very much for watching till the end of this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you want and leave a comment down below if you have anything you want to share. Thank you very much and I will see you in my next video. Bye!